love this virtual stage and you guys have done an incredible job of pivoting with all of this craziness. So congratulations to the DC Startup Week team and thank you for everybody who's here. I am so excited. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Monday, hour one. Um, so I assume most of you are in DC on the East Coast, so I'm wondering how many of you have lunch, but I'm gonna ask you guys to type a little bit, um, probably chime in a little bit. So at some point I'm gonna ask you to go off mute and we're gonna actually be able to troubleshoot some of the stuff that's happening in your minds and with your schedules. But in the meantime, I'm gonna ask you guys um, to put your name, the number one reason that you're giving up your lunch time to be here today, and then the one feeling you're experiencing right now with this workshop. And I'm also going to ask you guys, if you're feeling brave, if you're already showered on this Monday morning, if you would go ahead and flip on your video. It completely changes the experience when I can see your faces. I can see your facial reactions. I see a few of you already have it on. So for those who are flipping it on, thank you so much. It really does allow me to engage a lot more with you. Um, instead of just staring at a blank screen, wondering what you guys are thinking. So um, use the chat. I will be checking in there periodically. Um, so keep mentioning that feeling that you're feeling right now in relation to the workshop and then the number one reason why you're here today, if you guys would. Um, and I'll check in there periodically as we get kicked off. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Give me just a second here. All right, bear with me. Looks like everything's loading up here. All right, I see a few more people on video. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Um, so this is how to get more done with Monday hour one. So I'm gonna tell you why this is incredible and I'm gonna tell you how to actually do it. And then again, I'm gonna be able to save some time at the end to just really go over any of the lingering hesitations or questions that you guys have. So I want to um, just do a quick agenda. Practice here, I'm gonna tell you exactly what that means in just a minute. The part where I warn you about Monday Hour One. Then we're gonna dig into why it's so incredibly game-changing to use this practice. The how, which is four simple steps. Taking it to the next level. Five pro tips to really get the most out of your Monday Hour One practice. And then we'll save some time again for Q and A's and takeaways. So feel free, I'm gonna just open up the chat here. So if you guys do have anything that you wanna mention, drop it in the chat. I will make sure to keep an eye on that. So what I mean by practice here, for most of my clients who really want to stop procrastinating and start focusing more so that they can do all of the tasks and projects that they have in their businesses, so that might be you guys too, one thing that I notice is that distractions are super prevalent. Now I want you to think about how you get your most high quality work done. So for most of us, we're not doing our highest quality work when we're multitasking, when we're checking notifications, when we're like talking to whoever else is in the room, when we're secretly looking at other screens on Zoom. So I want you to just think about that as we dig in for the next hour, is this is your opportunity to start practicing being focused and fully engaged and present in the moment. I would actually love to know in the chat if you guys are, feel like you're totally focused all the time, you get shit done nonstop, I would love to know that. Um, but I would also love to know if there's other people in here who are like, yeah, that's me. Like I'm always the one multitasking, I'm always doing lots of different things, um, and I have trouble focusing and staying present. That'll be really helpful to know. Yeah, somebody said very much a multitasker. Totally. That's most of my clients and that's me sometimes. So keep dropping is if you feel like you're a person who's just focused all the time or if you're the person who's multitasking. Oh, someone's like, I'm super focused. Okay, Allison, I feel like that was my challenge to make sure that I provide a lot of value today. So challenge accepted. Um, so this is my question. This is my bookend question I want to start with and I'm going to end with this as well. Out of 100%, how effective do you feel like you are on average on a daily basis? And I want you to drop your answers into chat with the caveat, this is not at all scientific. This is just your best guess. So use that out of 100%. I'm gonna get some answers here. 75, 70, okay. 
45%, very specific, and a sad face. 89, even more specific. Okay, Allison is definitely my challenger, and I really like it. <laughs> um, 75, yeah, a lot of 75. Yep, 70. Okay, so let's say, yeah, it varies day to day for sure. Let's say we're working with a range of about like 60 to 80, 85. 89 if you include Allison. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going to be working with. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go forward. This is the part where I warn you. So I want to be very, very clear with you up front that this is the most resisted process from my clients. This is the process that people most struggle to adopt, most struggle to want to adopt, um, and so I'm really curious, I'll, I'll be curious to see as we go through if you guys have that reaction too, where you're like, it sounds nice in theory, but I don't know about this. Totally fine. I love to be challenged. So it's really resisted up front, but once people adopt this process, this is what they say. I've been more focused and productive than any other Monday morning in a while. I even put everything on my calendar winning the day, week, and my life. I love that one. And then another one. I'm really enjoying the system. It's like next, next, next level productivity. Wow. I promise you guys I did not write these. These are actually client testimonials. Um, so bear with me as we dig into this because you might feel a lot of resistance and I want you to just watch what your brain is saying as I go through this entire process. So I could talk about Monday R1 all day, every day, if you let me, but I wanted to really narrow down the benefits to just two. So this light bulb represents something really specific. I want you guys to think about how often in your life you're not present in the moment, right? I mentioned that at the beginning, but I really wanna bring our attention back to that. So I want you to think about how often you're working and thinking of how you wanna be doing other things besides work. So you want to be hanging with your kids. You want to be hanging with your significant other. You want to be watching Netflix, the home edit, if anyone else binged that over the weekend. You want to be doing anything that's not working. For me, I go virtually to Cancun in my mind when I don't want to be working. And I want you to think on the other side how much time you spend when you're quote unquote relaxing that you're not feeling relaxed that you're thinking of all the work that you didn't do last week, this week, today, this morning, whatever it is. So I want you guys to use the chat to really answer that question is, how often do you feel like you're in that in-between place where you're not fully on and you're not fully off? Somebody said all the time. Yeah, my mind is always in the future. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you guys are saying, Happens 70% of the time. Yep, all the time. Yep, you're in the right place. You're not alone and it's solvable. So I want you to take this metaphor with you. This came from a client console and she said, it's that feeling of being on the dim switch. I'm not on lighting the room, but I'm not off conserving energy either. I'm just in the middle, draining energy on all fronts. So as we go further into this, talking about Monday R1, I want you to think about how this is an incredible way to be on or off, not in between. And if that resonates with you, if someone's going to carry that metaphor, make sure you tell me in the, in the chat and I'll be sure to pass it on to her. Um, the other really big piece that sums up Monday R1 to me is this idea of moving from reactive to deliberate. And so when I work with my clients, what we notice is that they spend the vast majority of their time in complete reaction mode. And that's a reaction to external things. So that's reaction to incoming messages on Slack or email or phone or spouse or whatever it is. But it's also in reaction to their internal things. And that might be like imposter syndrome, insecurity, overwhelm, uh, confusion, like what do I do next? So I want you to notice how often of your day you spend reacting to things that are internal and external and what it might be like to move into deliberate mode. Feel free to give me like an emoji, like a 
anything exciting in the chat if you're ready to learn how to actually do this. I don't know if you can do emojis on Zoom chat, but we'll see. I want to give you this one last lens. Yeah, awesome, thank you guys. <laughs> I want to give you this one last lens to view things through as we learn the actual how of how to do Monday Hour One. This is a practice. And I add this subtext, you can't not get better. If you are showing up for Monday Hour One and you are working the system, there is just no way that you can't get better with this. So I want you to carry that with you again as we go into this. And you might be able to prove me wrong, but my question for you would be, why would you want to? Prove me right that you can't not get better with practice. So now I'm like, this is the part you guys really came for, right? You're like, okay, that sounds nice. Awesome. Thank you for the benefits. Tell me how to actually do this. So um, I see some more of you flipping on cameras. That's great. Keep flipping on those cameras. I love it. Um, I want to prep you as I tell you how to do Monday Hour One in four simple steps. I want to tell you that your brain is going to freak out. I'm gonna tell you four steps and you're gonna be like, wait, what? There's more, there has to be more. What about this? What about that? What about that? And I want you to get out a pen and paper if you don't already have one or Evernote, whatever you use to take notes. And I want you to be the watcher of your own brain as I give you these four steps. Anything that pops up in your mind as I tell you the four steps is really, really, really important information. So are you guys game? Everyone have a writing utensil of some sort, a keyboard. And I'm going to ask you guys, awesome. I'm going to ask you guys to actually drop that into chat as I go. So as your brain has questions or thoughts or hesitations or objections, whatever you want to call it, drop it into chat. So these are the four steps. Write everything down that you need to do or want to do in a given week. The second step is to choose how much time to give to it. The third step is to put it on your calendar. And the fourth step is to follow through and watch your thoughts. Now, I always like to joke at this point because I'm corny. I'm like, okay, that's it. Go home. We're done. We did it in 13 minutes. Go us. <laughs> but I'm imagining that you guys still have some thoughts in your brains about what all of this means. So I'm going to ask you to actually just use the chat again to drop in. Oh, yep. Okay. This is great. Keep it going. I'm going to respond to everything in the chat. And as you type out your questions and your hesitations, I want you to keep this in mind. Every single thing that your brain is saying is an obstacle. I'm imagining that it's going to feel very, very, very true to you. Maybe like it's not even solvable, but I want you to think it's just an obstacle and every single obstacle has a strategy. This is so important that I'm gonna repeat it. Everything that your brain is saying is an obstacle and every obstacle has a strategy. If you walk away with one thing, I would love for you to walk away with that. That I think is the key to the universe is that everything you're thinking that you think limits you is just an obstacle with a strategy. And once you get really good at brainstorming strategies, life looks very different. So um, I'm going to read out, I'm going to ask you guys to clarify. So Shelly, what does overwhelmed mean? Do, are you overwhelmed by the things on your list? Are you overwhelmed by this presentation? Both, what is it? Um, clarify that for me if you would. So um, we have, I'm so sorry, I'm going to butcher the name, Ekapop, Pob? Okay, Ekapob, great. <laughs> um, says, I've tried this, dot, 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 very specific, multiple times, but still can't get it to stick. I love this. Can I pick on you real quick? Here, let me unmute you. Well, let's see if I, oh, there we go. Okay, hi. Hi. Thank you for that. I love a challenge. <laughs> okay. So when you say that, you're like, I've tried this multiple times, I still can't get it to stick. What are you feeling when you're saying that? Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, basically, uh, hopeless. It, 
you know. Yeah, skeptical. Yeah, skeptical. We tried it. it. Yeah, not working. Here's my question for you. I want you to be super honest. And I'm picking on you because this happens in every single workshop. Just to be very clear, have you done steps one, two, three, and four on repeat consistently week over week? Um, I probably get about two, three weeks in, um, okay. and then after about three weeks, um, I just kind of, uh, well, so I can't keep, I, I can't seem to keep my schedules. So everything just kind of gets pushed off and then, you know, um, yeah. And then it just seems like it's not working and then I just stop doing it. Okay. So like, I just want to be really clear for you in your mind, your brain's like, try it. It doesn't work. Right. But the reality is you've tried it. It works. But after three weeks, it, it feels like it doesn't work anymore. Um, it, it sort of works. Like, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't ever seem to kind of like keep the schedule. Uh, something always yeah. you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. What gets in the way? Um, you know, some, some, some sort of distraction. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I want to offer to you. And I really appreciate you just volunteering yourself up. I kind of voluntold you. Um, but really keep in mind the way that our brain's like, well, I've tried it and it doesn't work. But, right, what we clarified is like, tried it, kind of works until, until something happens and that something is a distraction. And I want you to think distraction equals obstacle. Now, distractions are really interesting ones, so we could dig into and we'll, we'll get to this with someone else so that you, I'm actually gonna mute you again, <laughs> but thanks. So I want you to think about distractions as obstacles. And so when you think about distractions, most people will tell me, they'll be like, I can't plan for distractions. They're totally unexpected interruptions. And my question is always, what percent of totally unexpected interruptions are totally unexpected? And what we'll usually get to is that the vast majority of things that we think are totally unexpected are actually able to be planned for. And then we're left with like a five to 10% of things that are actually truly unexpected. So I want you to carry that with you is that idea to recap that your brain tells you it doesn't work, but actually that's not entirely true. And that's not the full story from there. Distraction equals obstacle. All obstacles have strategies. And then most distractions that you think are totally unable to be prepared for actually can be. So that's three major takeaways, just from one. Thank you, Echo Bob. Okay, so W said how to prioritize. Um, great question. So you can actually use Monday hour one to schedule time to prioritize. I have a worksheet. I'm gonna give you guys some follow-up resources in just a minute. And I have a, a worksheet that you can do. It's called top five priorities. And it's where you actually carve out time to spend time thinking about what's actually important in your life at a high level basically like the pillars of your life that you really want to focus on. And then your action steps tend to fall into place when you have an idea of the umbrella of priorities. So my first example, my number one priority always is my mind, body, spirit connection. Because I know without that foundation, everything else falls apart. And then within mind, body, spirit as a priority, then I can start figuring out, okay, what does that actually look like day to day? For me, it looks like morning pages, three pages of writing every morning. It looks like a lot of walks, especially in quarantine. Anyone else a walker? <laughs> um, so then everything else tends to fall into place. So hopefully I answered that question about how to prioritize, but W, you're welcome to follow up there. Um, how do I know how much time each task will take? Vanetta, would you be willing um, to, can you raise your hand so I make sure I see you? Okay, would you be willing to go off mute? Okay, I didn't scare you too much? No. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I'm actually gonna go off uh, my screen so we can just look at each other more closely. Okay, perfect. So I want you to think about how you phrased this versus how I phrased it. So what I said is choose how much time to give each task. And what you said is I don't know how long things will take. Hmm. So I want you like, what's, what's coming up for you when I say that? Cause you just had like a, you're like, yeah, I get that difference. Yeah, like, no, it, that, that actually does make sense. And I'd written it down too. So I guess there is just the sort of proactivity of saying, I will spend five minutes on this, even if it takes 15 minutes. Yes. 
Well, and it's the difference of we think we don't know how long things take, but I'm actually, I have five pro tips and I'm going to share one ahead of time because it's actually perfect here. So I want you to think, actually, are you willing to keep going with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me one task that you want to get done this week that you're like, I just don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I'm creating an online course and I have to do the outline for okay. that course. It's my first time doing it. So I actually, I actually have no idea how long that's going to take. I love it. Your brain's like, not only is it my first time evidence that I clearly don't know. Right. But you're like, I truly don't know. This is so good. Okay. So your brain's very convinced you don't know how long. So I want you to think about the finished result of this outline. If you had to take your best guess, how long do you think that might take to get that finished result? Uh, I mean, it's gonna be a kind of shot in the dark six hours. Okay. Yeah. Why six hours? Um, cause I'm like, there's thinking time, there's time to write it out and then there's the time to clean it up and type it and to send it for feedback and yeah. Okay. So your brain's like shot in the dark, just so you know, I really don't know, but you kind of know. Do you feel like you know a little bit more than when we started? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now here's what I want to do with you. I want to challenge you. So I want you, this is called the Oprah tip. I want you to think that Oprah walks to your house with a mask, obviously. <laughs> and she's like, okay, if you can get this done in six hours, no more, $1 million, no strings attached. Direct deposited into your bank account. <laughs> now I want you to be like, would you in that moment be like, sorry, Oprah, shot in the dark. I don't know. I just, and she's like, no, it's a million dollars. There's no strings attached. And you're like, I just, I'm not sure. I've never done it before. So what's your reaction? Obviously I'm kind of messing with you, but what's your reaction to that? Yeah, that it would be like, oh yeah, I'm sure I can do this in way less than six hours. <laughs> Maybe right. <not> three. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I just love using this example. I call this the Oprah trip and, trick and I want you guys to carry this with you. And you can use whoever else besides Oprah if it's fun for you. I just like Oprah. And so really notice that if you had a super solid, compelling reason to get it done, you would not mess around. Right. You would get it done. So are you willing to carry all that with you? I am. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering. I think that was an awesome one. You guys are you guys are great. This is why I love the DC Startup Week community. Okay. <laughs> People are like, that's a great trick. It works so much. Okay. Let me go back to some of the other hesitations and objections. So how do I know how long each task will take? It's hard to estimate the time per item. I think we covered that one. Sometimes I start a task, but can't finish because of someone else. I love that. Anna, I don't know if you're on video or not. It doesn't look like it. If you are willing to come or just unmute yourself and or come on video, I would love for you to just drop that in the chat and I'll make sure that I find you and we can talk about that. Oh, hi. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. There you go. Hey, welcome. Hi. Okay. okay. I'm just going to move away from my husband who's also on a video call. Okay. Perfect. Is he the someone else that you always have to blame? <laughs> yes, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for example, I um, am helping my sister with her website. It was something that's on my to-do list and I go to transfer her domain name from one site to another, from one host to another, and the password she gave me is bad. So I can't do it. So um, I'm like, okay, well, I can't do that now. So the time that I have a lot, now I'm waiting on her to change her password. Just like a yes. really simple example of something Perfect. like that. And this is great. I love the simple example. So I've been talking to my clients lately about this idea where they're like, my work is contingent on other people. And when they give me the work product that I need to then take and run with, they're like, it sucks, right? Or it's messy or it's wrong, right? Whatever it is. We're like, this other person did not do their part. And now I can't do mine. Now the solution, which most people don't really like this solution, but here's the reality is you can't control how much or how good or how, how well done someone does their part, unless you're their manager, 
or maybe their parent, <laughs> right? We can't control other people, but what we can control is the prep work that we do to ensure that our schedule runs smoothly. So that was kind of a big hint, and I do have a specific idea in mind, but I wanna see where does your brain go when I'm like, what else could you have done to ensure that you had everything you needed? Well, I guess maybe for that example, like not even putting on my calendar unless I had all the pieces that I needed. Totally. How would that? But be? that's a task in itself. Yeah. So totally. Like that. So prepping for. Pre yes. Something is. Yes. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, and 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 the way you say it too is very normal because we're like, ugh, like there's almost that little bit of disappointment. Like, oh, there's I'd have to prep more. And what I want to offer is that with Monday Hour One, when you go to do this process, when you go to do that, write everything down and, and allocate time and put it on your calendar, you're going to be very, very, very convinced that this is a lot more effort than it's worth. Mm. So I just want you to, everyone, prepare that you're going to be like, this sucks and I'm not a fan of Christina. I'm not a fan of me every single time I do Monday Hour One. I'm like, this is never going to work. And then on Thursday and Friday, I'm like, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pat, me. So yes, you're absolutely right. I call it slowing or yeah, slowing down to speed up. What else do I need to get in place for this in order to make my time run smoothly? So how do you feel about that, Anna? No, that makes sense. That makes sense. What is your feeling about it? I mean, I think it would probably make my day go smoother if I wasn't just jumping from one thing to another. Like, you know, five seconds ago, I got a text from her saying that she reset her password and I stopped what I was doing yes. to go check it. Yeah. I was like, okay. And then I started doing stuff with that. And then I kind of got sidelined from what I was doing. Yes. Um, and now I have like a bazillion windows open and I yep. forget where I was. Yep, exactly. And so in the future, let's say that the same incident happened with the password and you're like, it's not right. And you tell her and she sends it over. What would you want to do in that moment when she sends it over? Um, just save it and then like allocate a new time to do it, I guess. Cool. Yeah. You willing to yeah. try that? Yeah. yeah. Cool. I mean, Thank you. Yeah. I'm doing it for free. So she doesn't have to, you know, <laughs> she has to uh -huh. try. There you go. Yeah. And I think that that's, I think free or not free, we still get to set our own boundaries where we're like, excellent, I am going to get to this, but it's not going to be till later. So that's actually a really good segue into one of the techniques I like to teach. Um, actually, I'm going to mute you, Anna, but thank you for volunteering yourself. The yes, no counteroffer, or you might like to call it accept, decline, counteroffer. And what that means is when someone comes into your space, energetically or physically, and you're working on something else, you always, always, always have a choice in that moment to say yes, no, or counter offer. So a yes usually just looks like, sure, I'll drop everything and I'm totally on it. And that you might wanna do that for someone like your boss or your kid, right? This is perfect, we have a child in the video. This is like a good illustration. It's like, sometimes you just wanna say yes. Sometimes you wanna be like, nope, that's just not gonna happen at all. And then the counter offer is where you say something like, hey, sister, I'm still super happy to work on your website, but it's not going to be until Thursday. Uh, so that's a really helpful strategy to carry with you. Drop this in the chat if you guys are getting some value. And if so, what specifically is sticking with you? Um, okay, Ekebob, I won't put you back on video. I'll save you. I'll spare you. But I think that you raise a really good one, which is I can't stick to my schedule. And when somebody talks to me about sticking, they usually actually do it in passive voice. So they don't say, I can't stick to my schedule. What they normally say is, it just doesn't stick. Like this strategy, tool, planner, tip doesn't stick as if they have no ownership over it. So I actually really like the way that you phrased it. Like, I can't seem to stick to my schedule. So that is step four. Follow through and watch your thoughts. When you plan ahead using the proactive part of your brain that has your best interest in mind, you're going to put things on your calendar, like that big project that you've been wanting to get to for like five years. You're going to put it on there. And then you of the present moment, who's faced with that is going to hate past you. And you're going to second guess 
and negotiate and pretend you didn't even see your calendar and accidentally miss your alarms because you're not going to want to face what's there in that work block. So I like to think of work blocks as kind of Pandora's box. Your work block, especially if it's emotionally weighty for you, carries a lot of information. And when you actually show up at your work block and you actually get to work, you get that information, right? So maybe like think of a video game where there's like a little box, there's a treasure chest. And the only way that you get the treasure chest is if you show up to that level. And sometimes you open the treasure chest and you're like, this sucks. This is not the treasure that I wanted. Turns out I have imposter syndrome and I think I suck and I'm never going to finish this outline and I'm never going to finish this website for my sister and yada, 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 right? But Sometimes you're going to show up to that work block and you're going to get traction on that big project. And you're going to be like, turns out I'm awesome. And I definitely should have been doing this. I totally know how to do this. So we don't know. We honestly don't know what's going to happen in your work block. It might totally suck. It might be the most amazing thing you've ever done. And you have to be willing to hold the paradox of both of those things being possibilities in order to show up for your work block. So I wanna, I'm going to go back down to the chat and just see if that piece resonated, especially if you guys have like something in your life that you're like, yeah, me in using the highest part of my brain who really wants to accomplish things that are really important to me in my life would put this thing on my schedule. But I know, I already know that me who has to execute on that is not going to be happy about it. I would love to hear specifics about what comes up for you guys when I ask that question. All righty, I'm going to head back up. You guys gave some good ones. Okay, Brad, thank you, said, I always overestimate what I can get done and I get dejected when I inevitably don't accomplish anything or everything. I, it's probably like 5% of my clients were like, I, I totally overestimate my work box. Like I give myself an hour and then I knock it out in 30 minutes. What most of us do is we underestimate. So that's just good to know is that chances are when you allocate a time, you're actually not allocating enough time. And the reason that we try to cram things in is because we're not willing to face the reality of the amount of time we have. So if you are always overestimating what you can get done, so you're overestimating what you can get done, you're underestimating how much time it will take, Brad. If you're constantly doing that, that is your opportunity to check in. Why am I doing this? Why am I consistently overpacking my schedule? What do I think I'm going to get by packing so much in? And is that really working for me? So most of us think we'll feel like proud or accomplished, but most of us generally just end up feeling frantic and anxious. So that's where you have to be on to yourself and super honest. It's like, is this actually getting me the result that I say I want? Um, okay. Shelly said she's overwhelmed by the list and how to get everything down. Yeah. So um, the goal is that eventually every single Monday you are spending no more than one hour writing everything down, choosing how much time to give it, putting it on your calendar, and then following through for the rest of the week. That's the goal. You might at the beginning spend more than an hour. So if you feel like you have a lot of different projects, if you have a lot of different tasks, if you have personal and professional, you just have all kinds of things in all different places, you might want to allocate more than an hour to really take time to assemble all of that. Shameless plug, I am um, also leading a workshop tomorrow on how to take your projects from half finished to done. And so I'll actually dig into that a lot more tomorrow. Um, yeah, all things feel like a priority. We talked a little bit about priorities, but I just want to reiterate that idea that when everything is a priority, nothing's a priority. It's so cliche, and yet it is so true. When your attention is scattered in a billion different directions, you don't show up fully on any of them. Okay, awesome. I want to keep reading the chat, but I also like doing the live element. So if anyone else is willing to go off mute um, and be on video, I would love to do some live coaching with any other hesitations that are coming up. So whether you've dropped it in the chat or not, um, 
just let me know. Let me know in the chat if you're willing to come on. Okay, awesome. Sequoia, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. 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 How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. What's up? This has been so helpful already. So thank you. I'm so glad. I think like probably many of my fellow entrepreneurs, um, there are, so I have my core business mm -hmm. and then I have a secondary business that kind of came out of the core business. And so I just feel like I'm balancing so much. And I think that something like I, I mentioned about the priorities and everything being a priority. And I think these are definitely going to help me um, to do that. But I guess, how do you... I don't know. I, I just feel sometimes like I'm not, I'm not able to do everything and I don't know how to, yeah. and even with, and this idea of um, even delegating work, mm -hmm. I'll have my people that I delegate to, but sometimes it feels like by the time I spend time telling them what to do, I could have just done it. But then it's like every entrepreneur ever, <laughs> but then I don't do it. Then I don't tell I don't. them because I could have done it and then it doesn't get done. So it's like this constant cycle of just trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you so much for presenting this. I do have a few different thoughts, some strategies. We can kind of talk through this as we go. So if you wouldn't mind just staying on here. So um, the first thought that I think is really interesting, and this is my daily thought process, is I can't do it all. I, I don't think I'll get to everything. And I want to just point out the reality that probably you can't. And I guess that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it kind of doesn't feel okay though. We're like, no, I don't know. So I have, I'm working on this archetype of different procrastination types, like the different reasons why people procrastinate. And I like to say I'm the impact seeker. And so it's like, I'm like, I'm going to do it all. Yeah. I'm seeing some nods. I'm like, I'm going to do it all. And when I have that mentality, I either get super frantic and panicked and I try to do it all in all different directions, like I just said, or worst, I'm like, I'm so overwhelmed, I'm gonna do none. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, think about that, is think about like the way that our brain is very convinced and very attached to the idea that like we should be able to do it all, we want to do it all, but it doesn't really ever pan out. The other trick that I like to use, and I would love to hear what comes up for you when I say this, is this idea of starting your Monday R1. Like as you go through the process, you ask yourself, if I could only do one thing this week, what would it be? Mm, okay. Does anything jump to your mind? I, I like that because it takes the onus off of, it takes um, pressure off of me to feel like I have to do everything, um, especially because I deal with clients. So a lot of times I'm doing all my client stuff and then my stuff gets sidelined. So if I just focus on one thing that I need to accomplish for my business for the week, then that actually still makes me feel accomplished in addition to doing my client stuff and not feeling like I'm rushing through their stuff, trying to get my, shortchanging everybody, trying to get stuff done. Right, I love that term, shortchanging everybody. And I think that that's really the power of Monday Hour One is that sometimes when we write everything down and we allocate it before we even put it on our calendar, we don't like what we see because we'll either be like, huh, interesting. This is going to take 70 hours. And most of us, I definitely don't want to work 70 hours. Some people do, right? Maybe during a launch you do, or maybe during like a particularly growth mode you might. And so, it, but most people don't want to see the reality of how long their tasks are gonna take. Mm -hmm. We kind of love living in the delusion that we'll get it all done. But when you allocate time, then you're like, oh, now I actually have to face the suckiness of knowing that I'm not gonna do it all. So what, what does that spark for you, Sequoia? I, I think it kind of goes back to the idea um, that you'd mentioned earlier about setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm able to set boundaries even with myself, then yeah. it would definitely make me feel less um, 
harried and sporadic and, and frazzled um, yeah. when getting stuff done. Well, here's, here's my hot take on boundaries. I'm like, the only person you're ever setting boundaries with is yourself. Like we think we're setting boundaries to control other people, but that doesn't work out very well when you have a bunch of people with free will who are going to do what they're going to do. So you, it's always about bringing it back to what do I want? Who do I want to be in this moment? And maybe I do want to work 70 hours and maybe I do want to be available 24 seven for my clients. I don't, I for sure don't, <laughs> but it's always about me and my decisions. Okay. Anything else, like what, anything else that's still in your mind is like kind of gripping onto any other hesitations or, or objections? I, no, I'm just looking forward to like actually trying this and yeah. seeing how it feels when I actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. It might suck. <laughs> like just so we're very clear, it might be terrible and that's fine. <laughs> it's a practice. Remember that. Thank you so much. I'm going to mute you, but thank you for coming on. And anyone else who is interested in coming on, just having a little chat like that. Um, it really helps me get in your brain. Um, oh, Trinell, awesome. Let's see. Oh, I see you. Awesome. Hi. Oh, no, I need. We did it at the same time. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. This is very helpful information. I feel like every time someone, um, you know, offers up a suggestion, I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's me. Right? <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Um, that's what I'm, I'm like. It's all like, it, nothing's going to shock me because I, this is, <laughs> this is our brains. Right. It's really hard being a creative. Right? Um, <laughs> we have too many ideas. <laughs> Um, I, like I was saying before, um, part of it is um, being overwhelmed or over inundated with information. Um, mm. I think for me, um, when I say, for instance, I've been, I've been operating without a full business plan. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I really want to get to a place of a full business plan because I have, I'm a nonprofit. And so, of course, that, is, that has to be in place in order for me to receive grants and all of that stuff. And so um, I do have an overload of information, research, um, mm -hmm. everything that I need to put in the business plan. But I feel like it's a lot of information. And when I'm going in to insert um, certain sections of a proposal, I just lost you. Can you guys hear Hello. me? Oh yeah. Okay. Hi, you're back. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, for, no, it's okay. um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So just trying to figure out a way to not get overwhelmed with all the information, all the research that I find to plug into my business plan and to proposals um, yeah. because it does take me to a place where I get fatigued. And, yeah. You know, like one person said before, I'm working constantly for like three weeks. I put this plan together. And then after the third week, it's just like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I want to do with you. This is going to be interesting. I want you to think about you, future you, who's finished the business plan. And it is the best business plan that you could possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm a badass. Mm-hmm. I see it. Okay, good. You got there fast. <laughs> Take some people. Some I, I, I can, I, I, was, I just had this conversation the other day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're like, I can be there in my mind. So that visualization is there for you. I love it. Now I want you to think about in that place of having a business plan that you're so proud of, what would you feel in that moment? Um, I would feel prepared. I would feel, um, really um, empowered to present a pitch. Um, and I would feel like this is the best plan um, to create the organization in the field that I'm in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty nice. <laughs> empowered and prepared. Yeah. Now your brain as a human brain tells you the way that I'm going to feel prepared and empowered is to finish the business plan. Mm -hmm. But I want to turn that on its head. And I want to tell you that the way to finish the business plan is to feel empowered and prepared. Mm. Okay. 
<laughs> what comes up for you? Um, because I, like I said, I was having this conversation and the conversation out of the conversation came that, you know, oftentimes fear comes about, um, when you feel like you have a lack of information or a lack of knowledge, yeah. um, which leads to the lack of preparation or, or thereof. And like I said, I, I feel like I have a lot of information, but I don't know if it's sticking. Yeah. So I don't think your brain's convinced you don't have enough information. Your brain is convinced it has too much information. Mm -hmm. I want you to, I'm just going to give you some empowering thoughts. If we were coaching, I would like help you develop your own, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to give you some and just take them if they fit. I have exactly the amount of information that I need to make mm -hmm. this incredible. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you thought a thought like that instead of the thought that you're thinking right now, which is there's too much information. Yeah. How it would change the way that you do your research, the way that you show up for your work blocks and the way that you get that business plan done. And the okay. fact that you were able to tap into the finished business plan like this, <laughs> means that you should use that as a tool. And the way that you use that as a tool is you go to future you. So instead of like being in the place constantly where you're like, I'm overwhelmed, there's so much information. I want you anytime you feel that to be like, okay, is it Trinell? Is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Okay. You're like Trinell. Trinell who's finished. What do you know that I don't yet know? Mm, okay. What did you do to make this business plan incredible? What information did you take and what information did you just stop looking at? How did you set constraints around taking in information? So future you is the best tip ever because future you knows things that you're not able to tap into. And so go there, like spend quality time with future you. And then I always like to remind my clients, I'm like, listen, that's just you right now. It's the same person. You just were able to tap into information that you felt like you didn't have access to. Yeah, yeah it's no, that's so good. That's yeah. so good. Yeah, okay. enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see so many, you guys are honestly, this is why I love the DC Startup Week community because you guys are so freaking engaging and you have a sense of humor. Like I can just tell when you guys are like open and receptive and nodding along. So I love y'all. <laughs> um, also, I'm from North Carolina and I've just decided to start saying y'all more recently. It's weird. Um, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to leave everything that's in the chat because I do have a follow-up resource. And I think that probably most questions that you guys are asking is going to be covered in the follow-up resources. Um, so Talked about that. So to take this to the next level, you're going to want to go to peakcoaching.co, not .com, slash workshop. And on that page, you're going to find a few different things, which you're honestly probably going to love. They're awesome. <laughs> First of all, I have a mini course called the Productivity Power Zone, and it's normally $99, but it's there for you guys for free. And it's the idea that the only things that you need to think about in terms of your productivity are four levers, which is time, focus, commitment, and priorities. So only four things you ever have to look at. So that's the free course there. And then you're also going to get a written guide on how to do Monday Hour One and answers to all the frequently asked questions that I get. So a lot of the questions that you guys are asking in the chat is you're going to be able to find the answers on this page. Um, from here, though, I want to just do a quick sharing of these five tips. We already talked about how to bring in Oprah. I want to talk about how to be your own project manager. So being your own project manager, I want to illustrate this with a, a client story. So I have a client named Ryan. He's allowed me to use his name for this. And he has a project manager named Chad. Chad is imaginary. Chad is his imaginary project manager. And so when Ryan gets to the end of a week and he's like, wow, I totally overestimated how much I could get done. I totally underestimated how long my work block should be. I forgot to give myself breaks. I didn't schedule in any downtime, all of that kind of stuff. He gets to go back to imaginary Chad and be like, Chad, listen, it was fine. I got it done. But next week, I'd really appreciate like longer lunch breaks. I'd appreciate if you took into account breaks, um, downtime, um, that project that you had me working on is actually not the most essential project. Let's switch it up. 
So it takes out all the drama because you just have this other little persona that you get to talk to. Future you, I've talked about a lot, but I just want to bring that on home. When you're scheduling Monday, hour one on Monday, go to future you of Friday. I like to do Friday at 5 p.m. And I like to ask the question, does future Christina like me? And if future Christina does not like me, it means I have not done my Monday hour one to the best of my ability. If that person is stressed or overwhelmed or um, could have maybe even taken on more, right? We're talking a lot about how to do less, but sometimes I want to take on more. I'm in growth mode. I want to make sure I have a really solid relationship and a lot of integrity between present me and future me. Scheduling from the right place, what this means, and this actually came from another client. So what she was, she ran into some trouble with Monday R1 and she was like, you know, it's, it's not working. And I, we started talking and I was like, what are you feeling when you're scheduling? She was like, well, I have the best feeling. I'm feeling really hopeful. And what we realized was hopeful is not a good feeling to schedule from. Because hopeful is created from a thought like, I hope I get this all in. Hope this works. Hope it sticks. But the real feeling that you want to be tapped into when you're scheduling is likely a feeling like commitment. And so it might be something like, I'm 100% going to get this done. Anything that goes on my calendar is getting done this week. I know my priorities and my calendar is a reflection of that. Or like me, I'm always like, pass me, hooked me up. That's my thought a lot. Um, so scheduling from the right place. And then last but not least, things are going to happen, right? I mean, 2020, enough said. Things are going to come up that are going to make you want to change your schedule. And that's not a problem as long as you actively make that decision and then you have your own back on that decision. So having your own back is like, yeah, I'm going to take off this Friday afternoon that I had previously scheduled because my friend, this is a real example from a client, my friend offered me a trip to her, um, to her house in New Hampshire and I want to sit outside because I haven't been outside in a lovely house in like a year. So as long as you actively make the decision and you have your own back, not a problem. What I don't want to see you guys do is to change your schedule and then be like, now I'm down the rabbit hole, I'm down the spiral, it doesn't work, it didn't stick, I messed up, I can't get back to it. That's the kind of all or nothing thinking that I really want you guys to be conscious of. It's not a problem if it happens, but just watch it happening in your brain. Um, so again, peakcoaching.co slash workshop. All righty. I am gonna answer any other questions or any other hesitations, objections in the chat. Um, so if you guys just want to drop it there, we have about six minutes left. Um, and I will, in the meantime, as I wait, did I see a hand raised? No? Okay. Let's see. Oh, this was perfect. Thank you. You guys are perfect. <laughs> um, let's see. Overwhelmed. What else have we got? Um, I like this. Allison said, I put everything on my calendar, but I hate being on my phone. So I use pen and paper. And then I find myself making multiple to-do lists. Yeah. So here's the thing, Allison, there's no to-do list. Like you can even get so crazy that once you make your list and you put everything on your calendar, you throw it away. It's like the ultimate symbol of really trusting yourself and trusting yourself to follow your calendar is taking that list and tossing it. That means you really trust yourself. Um, what can you use to consolidate calendars? Jesse, I love this question. I was actually on a walk today and I want to recommend an app. If you guys love to walk and just verbally spew things, um, the app that I've been using for that is called Otter, O-T-T-E-R. And I'll just walk. And I was walking, um, through DuPont where I am right before this. And I was like, someone is going to ask about how to merge calendars and what to do if you have more than one calendar. I was like, hundred percent, someone's going to ask this question. And I was like, what do I want to say? What is the best answer that I can give to that question? And the thing that I want to bring your attention to Jesse and anyone else who's asking this is before I answer the question, notice the way that your brain, I'm like, here's an incredible 
game changing, incredible solution. Here's how to do it in four simple steps. And your brain's like, yeah, but what about how to consolidate calendars? So I'm laughing because I totally predicted that this was going to happen. And I'm laughing because it's like our brain wants to go to this micro detail. That's where our focus goes. So first just notice like how interesting that I think this tiny detail matters the most. But now I'll actually answer your question. <laughs> um, yeah, Jesse's like, LL. I know, it's like, it's so interesting. That's where our brain just naturally is wired to go. So the answer is, um, so a lot of people, the normal thing that people have is they have like a business calendar um, or if you work a corporate job and you don't want people to see it or if you have like a personal one. I am a business owner. I consolidate everything onto one calendar. Um, and I have like rough working hours and then every like personal task for the most part is after those hours. Um, and I do it on one calendar, but you could totally have two calendars. Like you could have, this is my calendar from nine to five. And this is my calendar for before and after. I just want you to notice that your brain will try to make that a problem. It will try to be overwhelmed by having more than one calendar. And I just want you to like reassure yourself. I got this. At nine, I switched to a different calendar. It's fine. So I hope that that's helpful, Jesse. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. I won't even make fun of you anymore. Um, all right. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the feedback. My mom says I overprepare. How do I stop and actually follow through without fear? Don't. You want the fear to be gone. What if the fear is just there? What if you're just scared shitless half the time? right? We're like, I don't want to feel negative emotion. And when most of us feel negative emotion, we're like, I don't want to be present to this experience. I'm going to watch Netflix. I don't want to be present to this experience. I'm going to vacuum. I know I'm good at vacuuming. I know that after I vacuum, it'll look amazing here and I'll feel great about myself. I know how to do that. I'm going to go learn more. We call it procrastinate learning. I'm going to learn more about how to do things. Procrastinate.